everyone close your eyes. And I want you to go back to 1981, wherever you were. I was not on this planet yet. But if you were, try to remember what it was like. Okay, so you're back in 1981, and you just had a near-death experience. And you're a little confused, you're a little scared, and you definitely want to talk about it. And you're wondering if there's any place out there that you could find people who've also had near-death experiences. Well, lucky for you, because you're in 1981, and that's when five guys decided to find the International Association of Near-Death Studies, INS for short. Welcome back. We're happy that you've joined us in episode two, and we cannot wait to see what today has in store, which actually today is all about networks and connections of NDEs. Remember what NDEs are? Did you study? Did you study? Because the quiz is next episode. Yeah, we said in two episodes, so we are going to hold you to that. Yeah. And we are going to write this quiz right before we record this. And episodes. we're going to send it to your job. Yeah. And if you fail... <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure you're coming back when you have an ND. <laughs> if you do not pass this quiz, there's going to be repercussions. Yeah. Um, welcome back, you guys, um, Beyonders. Um, so like Marina was saying, this episode we're going to be talking about the near-death experience networks in the communities that people who've experienced these phenomena build with each other. It is so interesting to think about that International Association for Near-Death Studies was founded in 1981 because I, I just feel like everything network now is through the internet and obviously that probably wasn't a thing and so I'm just so curious how that like came about and and that obviously there were enough people with a similar experience that they wanted to just talk about it that's so interesting it seems to be that they all have a connection through learning and studying the effects of the afterlife on people. And so I just think it's so fascinating that we have we have a huge network of just people who legitimately like are studying this stuff. And that's so freaking cool that we have such a great resource to look at and that other people are interested and that there are, you know, actual like scientific studies as well as like just kind of you know effects that it has on people well and i think too if you think about the like human aspect of like a support group and that you can kind of feel maybe normal in spaces like this where like if you had these weird experiences or this like um out of body type things you don't have to explain it to people who have also experienced it so i feel like it's it's kind of a, a nice way to do like normal things with other people. So in doing research for this, um, there was an author that I came across. His name was John Burke, and he was very religious. He's very much a Christian, and he he wrote a book recently called Imagine Heaven, and basically he describes his kind of descent into near-death experiences. And one of the things that he kept touching on um, was the fact that it's people trying to describe what happened to them with like – all five senses when really you're experiencing it with like 50 and so it's like you're trying to take this thing that happened to you that's so unique and you experience it in such a different way and come back to the human world and you're trying to explain it to people who have no idea what you're talking about so it's really hard for people like that to really put the perspective and emphasis on what they're trying to tell you if you haven't really experienced it yourself and so I think that's why it's so important that places like INS is like alive and well and even the Facebook groups that are out there for near-death experiences are so important because like you know I just can't imagine going through life experiencing this and then not having anybody to talk to about it or you know yeah I think the Facebook group the, if, you, if you're interested you don't I don't think you have to have had an NDE to be a part of it but it is so interesting the near-death experience support network and that's one of the biggest ones on Facebook and a lot of it is just people a lot of people get on camera and just tell their stories um, which I think is just so fascinating that there's now like archival storytellings that you know go forever on the internet um, but the IANS has a really interesting part on their website where um, you can like write your testimonial or like talk about your experience, but you can do it in the form of like 
storytelling. So I, I was like, like, I read a beautiful poem and someone like was able to sum up their experience through a poem. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. That is so beautiful. I love how that there's just so many different ways you can tell this story. So let's give you a little bit more information about IANS. So basically what IANS is, is the, you know, like, like we said, the International Association of Near-Death Studies, which is, I don't know, Marina, is that on the quiz? It could be. It should. It probably should be. So their creed is kind of spreading awareness for spiritual transformation experiences as well as networking. And so that's what they're kind of trying to do is that not only give you more information, but also help share stories and, and connect people to people who have also had similar experiences. I just think it's so cool. Like they have support groups in different cities. Like they have so many different resources right now. If you have the opportunity, get online and look into it because it's just super freaking cool. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting too, to just go through and read some of the articles. Cause you were talking about like the science part of it. And there's a lot of research being done on what your body experiences when you're back in your physical body um and one of the cool ones is they're doing like a sleep study right now of like the physiological changes after you experience an nde how it affects your dreams and how it affects you sleep how, wow. how you sleep because mm -hmm. you're basically like it's almost like you were sleeping while you were you know nearing death or dead um so it affects your um uh, like circadian rhythm and various aspects of your sleep so like studies like that i think are so interesting that like I don't know, not that you wouldn't, I wouldn't think to do that as a study, but it's so specific that you need a, st a sample size that you're going to be able to find. And so why wouldn't you do it through an association? It's like, oh, how are we going to find these people? Oh, these people are part of this. So it kind of works well together too. Talking about sleep studies, there was actually a study that was done with people who had went into cardiac arrest and had flatlined. And they did a study to kind of it was more to corroborate these stories of near-death experiences in doctors' eyes to see, like, how much validity they could put into them. So it's really hard to maybe believe, you know, the crossing over aspect, especially if you're so medically inclined. But they did a controlled study where they took a sample size of people who went into cardiac arrest and flatlined who didn't have an NDE and then people who went into cardiac arrest and had NDEs. It was a blind controlled study. So the people who were asking the questions didn't know until later, like who was answering them. And they found that the people who did not have NDEs could not answer questions like what were the doctors wearing? What were you doing? Like, did you see yourself? They couldn't answer questions. When looking in the controlled group that were people who experienced NDEs, 92% of them got everything correct. 6% got some of them correct and only 2% didn't get any correct. But that's really, really crazy that they can do scientific studies on on near-death experiences. So it just is like further proof to the people who, you know, are anxious about death or don't believe it, you know, that there is something, you know, life after death. And I also think it's when you mentioned that you can have like a technical near-death experience and not experience an NDE. I also think there's something so, I don't think magical is the right word, but something so special then that to have those kinds of experiences because it's that's not even guaranteed either, it doesn't sound like. No, it's true. There are people who, who you know, get into car accidents or say their life flashed before their eyes, but they don't necessarily have near-death experiences. That's why it's so unique. And on top of what you were saying in terms of people who, you know, don't necessarily have near-death experiences, um, Bruce Grayson, who's one of the founders of IANS, actually, he was talking about how there have been several different studies that they've tried to do where they try to recreate near-death experiences. Either it's through, like, you know, different hallucinogenic drugs whether it's through transcendental meditation or hypnosis or therapy of some sort and it doesn't work because these near-death experiences are so particular and so profoundly different and important that no amount of trying to recreate it will give you that near-death experience so that's why these people feel a certain elevated level of whatever it is that they go through because it's so particular it cannot be replicated and they've tried but they just literally cannot replicate it i think that's so interesting because one of the things that i found on the ians website that i think is very helpful for people who've experienced them 
and the people who live with them or for whatever there's uh tutorials it's an nde training video it's meant for like the the nurses and the staff that take care of people after oh, wow. uh, they've had experiences so i'll just kind of do a, like the quick synopsis of what the video is supposed to be about so the purpose of the nde training video is not only to educate medical professionals about what an nde is but also to help them see that ndes are fairly common and that they may need to set aside their own reactions and beliefs to assist their patients Many mass media depictions of NDEs still feature them as mysterious, inexplicable psychic events. Others try to explain NDEs in physical terms such as oxygen deprivation to the brain. This video shifts the emphasis to patient care with NDEs presented as normal human experiences, which must be treated in the larger context of patient needs. Rather than focusing on the mystery of the near-death experience, this training video focuses on NDE's impact on patient healing. And I think that's another element to the network that is so important is that when you have that like combined human experience of we've experienced this together, it takes away the stigma that you're alone in experiencing that. And I think that if nothing else, having associations like this are so beneficial to bridge those gaps that I'm sure people feel that I'm sure they feel lonely just having almost died but then having like these kind of -of out-of-body experiences you need that connection 100 percent, and that's actually something that um Dr. Grayson was also talking about because it's not all positive I mean overwhelmingly it is positive and we'll get into that but just because we're we're talking about the loneliness that people can feel there are negatives that come along with these near-death experiences and the aftermath and how you cope and live from there so basically he explains it as this near-death experience is the most important thing that's ever happened to these people in their life and so if you can imagine you're you know you're a father you're a husband and no longer is it your marriage or your kids it's this like overwhelming sense to help people now and so in the return to earth they're not only changed in the way that they view the world but just as the person they were before they're definitely changed i know that last week we did talk about how they become more spiritual and in doing further research they're not necessarily more religious they're just more spiritual and a lot of them have said that organized religions are just kind of like the umbrella kind of catch all for what it really is and this god being is way bigger than any type of one religion this love and this light this god being that they meet in the great beyond is the true way and so they become more spiritual they are more interconnected with the spiritual aspect than the specific dogma they were even raised with they come back with this feeling of do unto others what you want done unto you And so that's the kind of like through line that they live with from now until the day that they truly pass on because that's what they've found in the afterlife. They are blissful. They're not the same person. But on the thread of, you know, not all the positive and the loneliness, there's a high divorce rate actually for people who experience near death. And a lot of it has to do with just the way that they've changed and they view money, they view time, they view all these things extremely different. Um, A lot of times they will run to crises. For example, I was looking at a story when there was very bad tornadoes in Moore, Oklahoma. Someone who had just experienced near death, actually like their baby was going to be born and they decided that they felt it was very important to help these people in this humanitarian crisis than their just own immediate family. Another thing is, is that in in having near-death experience, people who are in the military or police and in figures of authority or have the authority to use weapons, a lot of times they will drop out of the academy or they will switch their entire focus, whether they were like Navy SEAL for, you know, 10 years, they will drop out and they will become clergy members or they will become medical advisors, EMTs or teachers. They just kind of take on a new role because they sense their previous life is over and then they have a higher being. But it's not all positive because if you can imagine your best friend going through near-death experience and then is kind of nothing like they were before, I'm sure that does come with a lot of hurt and a lot of loneliness on both sides, really. But that's just another experience that happens in the life after near death. So I was reading about near-death experiences as it relates to children. And it is so interesting to think about how it affects a developing brain and I guess something that comes out of that is that 
the children lessen their relationship with their parents because the universal love and the love for like the whole becomes more important than like individual love and that's something that it just like triggers something in their brain as they're developing that they keep for the rest of their lives so they, they're able to experience more love but their love is kind of more empathic in a broad sense versus just like I'm able to like put my love and focus into this one person so I, I feel like that in a way can probably be isolating because yeah. you feel it generally but not specifically but at the same time you probably feel a deeper love yeah that's why having these networks are so important like we've said a thousand times how important it is but it just really it does really change you in ways even more than just not being able to describe what happens to you um, and that's really interesting about the kids. I didn't know that, but, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And it, yeah, like I said, it's probably really hard. I mean, wow. I mean, there is a lot of positive because these people literally are like, this is the most important thing that's ever happened. I need to prophesy. And that's kind of amazing is like you can now be a beacon of light for so many other people. But it does, it does, you know, impact your interpersonal relationships. Yeah. I also think, too, in like reading about the kids that it's kind of a cool thing that uh, they they start a lot of kids say that they then experience like a guardian angel with them so it's almost like they feel like they constantly have something with them surrounding them with love so uh that sense of love and sense of like belonging probably while it can be isolating like we said it can probably create this like comfort internally they also have increased intelligence i read so they're just they they're it 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 broadens their minds as well as their hearts. I'm sure. So if you're not a person that's into the association type way of connecting with people, mm. a very easy way to connect is through social media. Obviously, that's probably going to be people's first route anyways for anything from experiencing an NDE to buying Nikes uh, from your neighbor. That's where you start. <laughs> and um, there are some wonderful, like I said, Facebook groups. And I think it's interesting. If you go on an NDE Facebook page, it is one of the most fascinating experiences. I'm so into reading their stories because you think of it as like, okay, there's these groups of people who have given testimonials. They're part of research. They're in documentaries. They're like very official people. No, there's so many people who experience it and they don't go out and seek these like bigger, broader conversations. They just go on the Facebook page and they write their experience down. And so I love going and reading them because they're all uniquely insane a lot of people comment like oh my gosh mine was just like this or they'll be like oh i i've never experienced symptoms like that like what does it feel like so the little facebook communities that come from this are just so fascinating as somebody who's obviously from the outside looking in i i love reading them i know last year when we were looking at one man's story and i forget his name but we were we were literally, we were going to do an entire like book about this man's journey just because of how intricate and detailed it was. And we, we just joined a Facebook page. Like I got all of that information and got to see all the love. And also there's people posting like, I've never had one, but I find it very comforting. My sister died two years ago and I just want to make sure that, you know, I just want to know if there's out there. And so it's just really a lot of like lifting each other up. I feel like that is what social media should do. It doesn't always, but especially in this realm, like really, I, I encourage you guys to get on Facebook and look and I encourage you to go to the IN's website because they just have so many things and if you want a passive way to experience ndes and and like you decide you don't want to go read and do research and do all of the things i would definitely suggest that you at least go on to netflix and watch the surviving death docuseries it came out in 2021 and um it's based on a book called surviving death obviously um and so the whole thing is talking about the near-death experiences they also talk about reincarnation and paranormal phenomenons so just if you don't if nothing else that is something that you can do that you'll get so much out of and i actually think i did watch that and there was a story on there of a and i don't know if i've told it before but i'm gonna tell it again because i tell it at least three times a year um there is a story of a terminal cancer patient she was 15 and her mom 
And around 12, she started to decline again. So she was in remission and then went, She, I think she got it when she was nine. She was in remission until 12. And then when she turned 12, she started to decline and she was very ill for a long time, but she knew that it was terminal. And her mother one day, like close to when it was g- time for her to pass on, she went in there and, she, and the girl was talking to somebody and her mom was just really like, what's going on? Are you okay? Like thought she was like sick or having an hallucination. She's like, no, I'm with Jesus and Aunt Becky, who is apparently her aunt that passed on and it was really beautiful because the mom at that point was no longer scared of her daughter passing on or just scared of what there was out there because she knew that there was going to be someone helping her along and it really gave her peace and that's kind of what that's kind of what NDEs kind of do with everybody and then also it's just it's really comforting to hear that and to see that and I just feel like it's a really powerful piece of content you can consume as well as you know other avenues to try to lessen the death anxiety but that was a very moving story and it just kind of really makes you think that you know it's healing along with this docuseries I did look up some movies and documentaries that would be really good resources for you guys to see I haven't seen all of them but um one of the best movies I think for near-death experience or afterlife is Coco that's what I was gonna say (laughs) literally Coco it's so good no it's, it's so good because at, on face value, you're like, oh, this is a great story. But when you dig a little deeper, you're like, did he have a near-death experience? Like, he's going over to the other side and he's, you know, meeting his relatives and all these things. Like, it's just such a great movie. I would suggest that one. My Sister's Keeper is also a pretty good one. Um, Tuesdays with Maury, It's a Wonderful Life, Grief Maker, um, The Tibetan Book of Death, Life After Death. Um, the nurse with the purple hair, which is something that I've been wanting to watch. She's a hospice nurse and kind of talking about what those people see in the hours and so before they pass and just kind of the life it, it must be living and working with people who are not long for the world. And then Heaven is for Real. And those are just a couple of different movies that have really good ratings. I would definitely say Coco is the homework. We're going to do a whole... You're going to have to recite Un Poco Loco and Remember Me on the quiz. So, I mean, definitely watch that. But those are just some really good pieces of pop culture or references that you can see that narrative the experiences doesn't have to live in this vacuum of you went over the tunnel and, you know, whatever else we said before. It can be so many different things. So, obviously, we hail from Chicago, if you couldn't tell by our... Dal Bear's accent. Yeah, because we have such thick Chicago We're, <laughs> we're both Chicago natives. natives. Yes. Yeah. Of five years and... Of, and of about a year and a couple months. Yeah. If you hail from Chicago and you're interested or you've had an NDE and you want that kind of close-knit community, the Chicago IANS, the Chicago International Association for Near-Death Studies is a thing and they have a wonderful program they do a lot of events they do a lot of support groups this is me plugging them even though i've not met any of them (laughs) but they have a really cool mission statement or what i consider a mission statement which is spreading awareness of spiritually transformative experiences as well as networking and sharing among those who have been spiritually awakened death is not to be feared it is only an awakening Again, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about in this episode. You know, this is our second episode and we just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit about the resources that are out there and just kind of like the community aspect because it is such a big part of this phenomena. We cannot talk about near-death experience without talking about the networks and the people that make them as important and make them you know accessible to everybody so that's what we wanted to talk about in this episode we're also working on getting some guests for you guys so this is another yeah i'm super excited this is another call to action um if you or somebody you love or just know you don't even have to like them if you just know somebody who's had a near-death experience has crossed over has come back please reach out to our instagram at bright lights beyond um, you can you can direct message us. You can also reach out to us on our website, which is the Bright Lights Beyond Near Death Experience podcast. You could just Google that and we'll come up. I know I've heard from a couple of you guys and I can't wait to set some stuff up, but we would love to have more people telling us what they think. And if you've had a near death experience, please, please reach out. So we promise if you've had a near-death experience, we will treat you with care and love and we will not be like, tell us every single detail of your life. Yeah, we, well, Marina won't. 
Okay. I might. No. All bets, all, all bets are off for Lexi. <laughs> no, no, no. Of course. We would handle this with the utmost care. We just are really fascinated and um, would just love to hear where you guys are coming from with that. Another thing that is pretty cool is we're looking for some sponsors for the podcast. So if you own an Etsy shop or you have a family business or there's just something you want to promote, please also reach out to our Instagram and our website. We are not looking for paid promos at this point. We're just looking to mutually share each other's content um, as content creators. So yeah, and also please let us know what you think of the podcast. We want to hear what you guys think. And, and if you have any topics that you think are worth talking about or worth us researching, we are open to anything. We are, again, on this journey the same as you are trying to figure out things and learning things. So please drop us a comment and let us know what you want to talk about. I'm so excited to potentially have a guest come and talk. I think that's where the bread and butter of this podcast will be is getting to hear people's stories and learning from them and giving us a little break so that we can hear the real shebang. Remember guys, like and follow us and share the podcast. Also, next episode is our quiz. So be sure to review the previous podcasts. And you can do that by sharing them online. And, and live, live life beyond. beyond.